Hi, I'm Mary Poplin, and today we're going to show you how to use the Align Surface tool inside of the Insert module. So, we're going to use Align Surface to replace this sign by using one of our frames as a paint frame that we can then transform along all the frames in this footage. So let's show you how that works. A lot of times when I show you how to use the Insert tool, what I normally do is I track the object that I'm trying to track, I take my surface tool and I align it to the object that I'm trying to track, and then we go ahead and we put an insert onto the object just by going to Insert Clip, and we drop an object right on there. But what if you want to paint a frame inside of the footage and use that as a clean plate that then gets translated throughout the whole shot? Well, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to track the sign. So let's go ahead and track translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective go ahead and hit track forward. Now it's really important that this track is very good. We're tracking translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective because perspective is actually present in this shot. That's because this door is actually moving in Z space. Now you can see Mocha's doing a really good job of hanging on, but we're fixing to have a problem here. We're actually fixing to have a problem when this sign starts to go off screen. It doesn't matter if it goes partially off screen, and it doesn't really matter if it blurs a little bit because that's the power of planar tracking. However, if it goes completely off screen, we're going to be a little bit in trouble. So how do we handle that? Well, we track a similarly moving plane. In other trackers, that's called offset tracking. In Mocha, it's called normal workflow. So we're going to do well in tracking for the next couple of frames, and then I'm going to need to switch. All right, so we start to lose it right there. You can tell by what the grid and surface tool are doing. You see how it just jumps and folds like that? So now we're going to take our shape, and we're just going to tell our shape to look in a new location. So I tell it to look at the side of this door here, just like this. And we're going to track translation, scale, rotation, yeah, share in perspective, and keep tracking that off screen. And that's going to give us enough information to not worry about. And we can let it track all the way through to the end if we want, but there's really no need because we're already completely done with that section. So let's go ahead and end our layer right there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my thumbnails off because they're in my way. And I'm going to roto this sign a little bit. So let's turn our grid and surface tool off and let's focus on roto. I'm just going to align our roto to the edges of our sign just like this. I'm going to zoom into my corners. I'm going to use my add points to spline tool. I'm going to really fix these corners. Add points to spline, just like this. And I'm going to add a point to this spline right here because it bows a little bit in the middle because of the lens. And we're going to add some points to this spline. And down here I'm going to do the same. And we're using X splines so we relax for curves and pull tight for corners. So we're going to relax for that curve just like that. And we're going to add one more point to our spline right here. Now, let's see how that rotor shape holds on. It's trying to animate to our animated shape. So let's just go ahead and delete this keyframe. And now our rotor should hold right onto our object. If we feel like it's slipping a little bit, we can actually use Adjust Track. And we're going to turn our mat on. And let's actually change this mat color so you can really see what we're doing. Let's change it to, like, purple. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add an edge width. So let's go ahead and use our Uber key. And let's go to edge width 10, and let's do add. And now let's go ahead and correct our edges, just like this. What we're trying to do is we're trying to create a nice soft edge on our insert, because we're going to replace this with a different frame. Well, same frame, but we're going to replace what our sign says. Okay, just like this. Now. Let's go ahead and turn our auto key back on, and what you're going to notice is that we have this really nice roto that follows our sign. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to our mats and turn them off. And now let's look at what our surface tool is doing. Do you see how our surface tool is on our sign? We're going to actually push this to the four corners of our frame because we're going to use this frame to track along with all of the rest of the frames in the shot. So what do I mean by that? We use the Align Surface tool right here, and we press it. And now our Surface tool 
is aligned to our whole frame. And it's going to warp anything we put in there along with our track. I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to go to the remove tool and I'm going to hit create clean plate just so I can save this frame right out of my shot. Back in my insert, I'm going to go ahead and import this in right after I've altered it. So I'm going to go to Photoshop and we're going to open that frame that I just created. And this is our clean plate right here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to paint out come on in, we're open. So let's just go ahead and take our clone tool, let's duplicate this layer, and let's start cloning this mess out. Now I'm using a big, wide, soft brush for my clone. That's okay, because this is just going to be our background. And now we're going to take our eraser tool and we're going to clean up these edges in case we paint it over anything, just like that. So let's put the Mocha logo on this sign. Let's go to File, Open, and let's just take our Mocha layers and let's drag them onto our layer. All right, so now let's just go ahead and go to Edit, Transform, Perspective, and let's make Mocha look like it belongs here. All right, so now Mocha is on our sign. We can make this look embossed if we want. Let's uh, make this like a little, like it's a stamp sign. Let's go to bevel and emboss, and let's do small size, just like that. Really small, I think more like, more like two pixels actually. And let's do a little drop shadow on it, but it's gonna be very subtle. So we're gonna do really low opacity. And now it looks a little bit like a metal stamped sign. So now we can go ahead and go to layer, flatten image, and let's go to file save or control S. So now what we can do is we can come back into our insert just like this. And in our insert, what we're going to do is we are going to go to insert clip import and let's choose our insert clean plate 01 import just like that. Now let's go ahead and go into comp and let's go to use layer mats. Let's turn our grid off and our surface off. And now what you're going to see is our sign is going to move exactly correct in our shot. Now we do have one problem though, and that is that we're starting to have a focus blur because the focus is changing. So let's go ahead and go to our insert and let's go to focus blur and let's put this at like 0.5. And as it increases, let's put this at like two. And then as it gets more blurry, let's put a focus blur at three. And here let's do a four. All right, so now we've got a little animated blur on that. So all we have to do from here is go ahead and turn our overlays off and hit render forward. Oh, actually, let's turn motion blur on so that we also get the motion blur. Now let's go ahead and hit render forward. And if we've done everything correctly, Mocha will render this out for us and it'll look really nice. The reason this lines up is because we did an aligned surface on frame one, painted that same single frame, and then used that as the insert. Because it was aligned on frame one, it is in the correct place for the rest of the shot. Now you can align it at frame 23, 48, it doesn't matter, just so long as that's the frame that you picked to align the surface on, and that's the frame you're using to paint. So it actually looks like I was way, way too conservative with my motion blur, so I went ahead and upped that to 4, 6, 8, and 10. You can always use the dope sheet to find where you put your keyframes inside of your insert tool. And that works for all of the parameters inside the insert tool, including your blurs, your motion blurs, focus blurs, and any sort of gain or opacity changes. If you have any questions, I am Mary Poplin with Imagineer Systems, and I am happy to answer them. We also have a forums and a videos page where you can get tons of free videos every single day. Thanks so much for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed this video.